SpaceX's massive Starship rocket might unlock the solar system and beyond. With the first orbital test launch of Starship on the horizon, scientists are dreaming about what it might make possible, from trips to Neptune to planetary defense. If all goes to plan, SpaceX will soon launch the largest rocket in human history, towering nearly 400 feet tall. The rocket, Starship, is designed to take NASA astronauts to the moon. Much has already been made of Starship's human spaceflight capabilities, but the rocket could also revolutionize what we know about our neighboring planets and moons. Starship would totally change the way we can do solar system exploration, says Ali Bramson, a planetary scientist from Purdue University. Planetary science will just explode. If it lives up to its billing, scientists are already talking about sending missions to Neptune and its largest moon in the outer solar system, bringing back huge quantities of space rock from Earth's moon and Mars, and even developing innovative ways to protect Earth from incoming asteroids. Starship, which is being built at a Texas site dubbed Starbase, consists of a giant spaceship on top of a large booster, known as Super Heavy. Both can land back on Earth, so they can be reused, reducing costs. The entire vehicle will be capable of lifting 100 metric tons, 220,000 pounds, of cargo and people into space on regular low-cost missions. The volume of usable space within Starship is a whopping 1,000 cubic meters, big enough to fit the entire Eiffel Tower disassembled, and that's got scientists excited. In mid-November, speaking in a publicly accessible virtual meeting about Starship, hosted by the U.S. National Academies of Sciences, Engineering, and Medicine, Musk discussed the project's scientific potential. It's extremely important that we try to become a multi-planet species as quickly as possible, he said. Along the way, we will learn a great deal about the nature of the universe. Starship could carry a lot of scientific instrumentation on flights, said Musk. Far more than is currently possible, we'd learn a tremendous amount compared to having to send fairly small vehicles with limited scientific instrumentation, which is what we currently do, he said. You could get a 110 object to the surface of Europa, said Musk. Cheap and reusable. Central to many of these ideas is that Starship is designed to not just be large, but cheap to launch, whereas agencies like NASA and ESA must carefully choose a smattering of missions to fund, with launch costs in the tens of hundreds of millions of dollars. Starship's affordability could open the door to many more. The low cost of access has the potential to really change the game for science research, says Andrew Westfall, a lecturer in physics at the University of California, Berkeley, with flights potentially as low as $2 million per launch. You can imagine privately financed missions and consortia of citizens who get together to fly things. What's more, Starship has a key advantage over other super heavy lift rockets in development, such as NASA's much delayed space launch system and Blue Origin's new Glenn rocket. The upper half of the rocket is designed to be refueled in Earth orbit by other starships, so more of its lifting capability can be handed over to scientific equipment rather than fuel. Taking humans to the moon, for example, might require eight separate launches with each consecutive tanker starship bringing up fuel to the lunar starship that then makes its way to the moon with scientific equipment and crew. Scientists are now starting to dream of what starship might let them do. Earlier this year, a paper published by Jennifer Heldman of NASA Ames Research Center explored some of the scientific opportunities that might be opened by starship's missions to the moon and Mars. One great benefit is that starship could carry full-sized equipment from Earth no need to miniaturize it to fit in a smaller vehicle, as was required for the Apollo missions to the moon. For example, you could bring a drilling rig, says Hellman. You could drill down a kilometer like we do on Earth. That would afford unprecedented access to the interior of the moon and Mars, where ice and other useful resources are thought to be present. Before, such an idea had been a little bit insane, says Heldman. But with Starship, you could do it and still have room to spare, she adds. What else do you want to bring? Because Starship can land back on Earth, it will also, theoretically, be able to bring back vast amounts of samples. The sheer volume that could be returned from a variety of different locations would give scientists on Earth unprecedented access to extraterrestrial material that could shed light on a myriad of mysteries, such as the volcanic history of the Moon or the question of life in astrobiology on Mars, says Heldman. Starship could also enable more extravagant missions to other locations, either via a direct launch from Earth or perhaps by using the Moon and Mars as refueling stations, an ambitious future envisioned by Musk. Trip to Neptune, one idea from an international group of scientists called Konex, Conceptual Exploration Research, is a spacecraft called Arcanum, which would make use of Starship's heavy lifting capabilities to explore Neptune and its largest moon, Triton. Neptune has been visited only once, a flying visit by NASA's Voyager 2 spacecraft in 1989, and there is so much still not known about it. Nobody's really thinking on the next level about what Starship could enable, says James McEvitt, 
a researcher at the University of Vienna and co-lead of Konex. That's what Arcanum is designed to showcase. Weighing in about 21 metric tons, the spacecraft could be four times heavier than the largest deep space probe to date, NASA and ESA's Cassini-Huygens mission, which explored Saturn from 2004 to 2017. No existing rocket could currently launch such a craft, but Starship would make it possible. Arcanum would have numerous components, including an orbiter to study Neptune, a lander to study Triton, and a penetrator to strike Triton's surface and perform a seismic experiment to understand its geology and its structure, says McEvitt. The mission could also be equipped with a telescope, allowing for studies of the outer solar system and aiding the hunt for planets around other stars. Other ideas are even more speculative. Philip Lubin, a physicist from the University of California, Santa Barbara, calculated that a large enough rocket, such as Starship, could be used to prevent an asteroid from hitting Earth. Such a mission could carry enough explosives, as large as the 10 kilometer wide rock that wiped out the dinosaurs. Its fragments would harmlessly burn up in the atmosphere before it had a chance to reach our planet. Starship could also be a better way to launch giant space telescopes that can observe the universe. Currently, equipment such as NASA and ESA's upcoming James Webb Space Telescope must be launched folded up, an expensive, complex, and delicate procedure that could be prone to error. NASA has suggested that a proposed super telescope called LUVOR, designed to image Earth-like planets around other stars, could launch on Starship, while Musk has said SpaceX is already working on an interesting project, which is to have a really big telescope, taking a lens that was intended for a groundbreaking telescope and creating a space-based telescope with it. No further details have yet been revealed. Elsewhere, some scientists have dreams of using Starship to prepare to visit other stars. Rene Heller, from the Max Planck Institute for Solar System Research in Germany, and colleagues say that Starship could offer a low-cost way to test technologies for a spacecraft that can travel multiple light years to neighboring star systems. Starship could release a sail-powered spacecraft on a trip to Mars, which would use an onboard laser to push against a thin sail and reach incredible speeds, enabling a demonstration to be conducted beyond Earth's orbit. If SpaceX were kind enough to take one of our sails on board and just release it halfway on its journey to Mars, we should be able to follow its acceleration and path through the solar system for a few days and almost to the orbit of Jupiter, says Heller. Other ideas include using Starship to send a probe to orbit Jupiter's volcanic moon, Io, a difficult task without a substantial lifting capability. It's extremely challenging because of both getting into orbit and protecting yourself from Jupiter's harsh radiation, says Alfred McEwen, a planetary geologist from the University of Arizona. But mass helps those things. You can have plenty of fuel and radiation shielding. Musk has suggested that SpaceX could launch as many as a dozen Starship test flights in 2022, with missions to the Moon and Mars both on the horizon, and plenty of scientific potential to boot. Once Starship starts flying, the development will be very fast, says Margarita Marinova, a former senior Mars development engineer at SpaceX. There are, of course, very good reasons to be cautious. While Starship has flown test flights without the Super Heavy booster, we have yet to see the full rocket launch. It's an extremely massive and complex machine that could still experience problems in its development. SpaceX and Musk, too, have previously been notoriously cavalier with timelines and goals. A proposed mission to Mars, Red Dragon, was once supposed to have launched as early as 2018, and Starship's proposed method to reach the Moon and Mars, relying on multiple refueling missions in Earth orbit, remains complex and untested. Yet there are also plenty of grounds for excitement regarding what Spaceship could do if it is successful. From the inner to the outer solar system, and possibly beyond, it may well open up a new era of space science. Let us know what you think by leaving a comment in the section below. Thanks!